Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and we are in a new season, a season of Arrivals. Obviously, we've got some big looming stuff in the fall, but right now you guys could be playing the game and wanting to know the best way to level up your character. You could be a new new player from 750, trying to get up to this max power level of 1060 you hear about. You could have been playing last season, still not entirely sure the best order to go about these things. So, my goal is to break this all down, let you guys know the, the best order of getting your powerful and pinnacle gear, what that actually means if you're a newer player, and also some of these new umbral engrams and definitely bounties you don't want to forget about. So let's jump in and cover everything for leveling in Season of Arrivals. All right, before I jump into the powerful gear and the tips of the order to pick up all those activities and powerful engrams and stuff, I want to cover a couple of tips for new players and also people who may have lapsed a few seasons or a while and wanted to jump back in because maybe they saw the Bungie reveal trailer for the next three years of Destiny and got hyped because I know I did. So if you want to jump ahead, use this timestamp on screen. We'll get into the uh, more, you know, higher level stuff. But here's a quick reminder for those of you guys that may want it, need it, or may be new to the game. So if you are a new player, there's a lot going on in this game. Not going to argue that. I'm not saying the new light experience is an easy one. Or if you brand new player, there's a whole bunch of stuff to do. But the way your character works is you've got two pieces that are going to make up your character's power level. Right now, I'm power level 1022. That's the way the game sees me. Where Whether it be the amount of damage I can take uh, from enemies. If you are lower power level against higher level enemies, you'll take more damage. And then also, it has a relation to the amount of damage that you're going to be able to do to enemies as well. So your power level is made up of two things. Your gear score, which is going to be the white number. You can see it says 1016. Then I've also got my artifact power bonus, which you can see is plus six bonus. Now your gear score is going to be the average of all of your gear, both weapons and armor, that you have equipped on your character. If I equip something different, it will change. So you're always trying to get your gear score as high as possible. And that is what you are working to acquire through all the things I'm going to talk about in this video. All of the gear is always what you're trying to get as high as you can. Now, there are different, you know, ways to get different gear. And the higher you get, there's less places to continue to level up until you get to the absolute max level. But the gear score is what you're working on. The bonus is something you have less control over. It's just based on your experience that you earn throughout the season. So the artifact is usually a new thing we get every season. As you guys can see on the left side, we've got all these mods that'll chew use weapons in certain ways and faster reloads and different perks. They're kind of cool ways to mess around with builds and things. But the power bonus, you can see down here by this little diamond, is plus six. Now what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to um, add a bonus power level on top of your gear score that lets you get even higher than the max gear of, you know, the entire season. So I'll get into the details on it, but the max gear score that you can have throughout Season of Arrivals by do, by being just the absolute max in gear is level 1060. That's the highest gear score. But if I was gear score 1060, my artifact would still be giving me this plus 6, so I would actually be looked at in the game world as 1066. So the artifact is one of those things just as you do activities, you're going to get experience from those. As you pick up bounties, certain tasks that you can do from vendors, you're going to get experience from those. So the more the more experience that you can get while playing the game, the higher your power bonus is going to be. And it's just going to help you throughout the season to be more powerful and even more powerful than that max gear score that you can earn. So only a good thing here. It just helps you over time be more powerful. So just to wrap it up, you've got your character's power level, which is a combination of your gear score, the average of all the things that you've got equipped, and your artifact bonus. And again, that's how the world sees you. So just a reminder or, you know, a little intro if you're brand new to the game. So the next thing to discuss is the power caps. There are three of them. And basically what that means is you'll be earning gear that continues to improve your level up until a certain point. And then after that, you're going to have to look for specific sources or at least different sources to continue to level your character up to that max power level of 1060. Now you have the soft cap first. Now, if you're a new player, a player that hasn't played in a little while, but basically if you're under a thousand power level, you are under the soft cap. So anything you do in the game is going to be giving you gear that is going to level you up. So say you're level 922. You haven't played in a couple seasons and you're jumping back in. Well, you can play pretty much anything you want and anything that drops is probably going to be one, two, or maybe three power levels above. And you're going to start to continually to keep those newer pieces of gear. You could equip them or not. Um, the game knows at least if you own the piece of gear that's higher. 
And as you continue to get new drops, make sure you always hold on to the highest piece of gear for each slot, and you'll continually level up. When you get to level 1000, that won't work anymore. Only certain activities uh, that have basically powerful engrams or pinnacle engrams are going to continue to take you above level 1000. So under level 1000, play whatever you want. Story missions, campaigns, PvP maps and Crucible. You can do Vanguard uh, strikes. You could roam around and do public events on patrol. Whatever it is, soft cap, you play how you want, how you want in the game. Go do anything. You'll get up to level 1000. Once you get to a level 1000, your director should also change to look like mine. Now, under level 1000, you probably won't see these little yellow, you know, icons next to a lot of these nodes on the director. That's because they don't want you playing PvP matches and wasting powerful drops before you can even use them. Once you get to level 1000 on gear score, then your director should look about like mine. Um, if you have the season pass or certain things, maybe a smidge different. But once you hit level 1,000, your powerful gear challenges were, uh, will unlock. And by doing powerful gear activities, there are certain challenges or do a certain number of bounties for a character or whatever the challenge says to do, you will be getting gear that will take you from level 1,000 to 1,050. And that is the powerful gear cap. Now, I'll use Crucible to show you real quick what I mean. So, say, in this playlist, it's the rotator matches. That's these two top ones, because they're the ones that literally rotate every week. Uh, if I do four matches completed, don't have to win, lose, or whatever. But if I complete four matches, I'm going to get powerful gear tier one, which is plus one, which I'll get to in a minute. So, say, this is the first thing I do. I do all the random activities in the game. I get up to level 1,000 gear score. I have hit every piece of gear that I have is 1,000. Can't get any higher. So, I come into Clash. I finish port four matches, and my first piece of gear that drops is going to be 1003. Powerful gear tier one is 1003. So that's the idea. You have to find these activities that have all these little icons on them, and that's going to continue to level you up from 1000 to 1050, and there are quite a few of them in the game. Now, there are a couple caveats before I get into that that I want to talk to you guys about when it comes to your gear score. And then also a couple things about the Crucible and Gambit playlist that will also help level you up that aren't specifically listed as like weekly challenges, but they will be dropping rewards that will help continue to level you after level 1000. Now, a little reminder as well. Um, if you have a piece of gear that is lagging behind, it is kind of important to try and kind of boost that one slot up however you can. Now, there are a couple ways you can do this. You can go into your season pass and you can see what your armor is gonna drop at because it just tells you literally the level. If you're on the free path, you get one set of armor. So you only get to do this one per one time per each slot. So make sure you're very picky. But if I was gonna gain 17 levels from one piece of armor, I would do it. That's a pretty big jump. If you're only gonna gain a couple, leave this out here. But if you have one thing that's really straggling behind, like six, seven, somewhere in that range, Pull the one piece of armor, you know, get that thing up to speed, and that'll raise your average gear score, which is going to be a lot better. If you have the season pass, which you purchased, you have the free set of armor up top, you have the second set of armor here, and you actually have a third set of armor, but it has very high stats when you get out to about 37. Try not to pull that one until you're really high level. That one, try and leave alone if at all possible, because then when you pull it out, you'll have a high level and a high stat roll set of armor, and you can use that for like end game stuff, which is cool. Now, if you also bought the season pass, you also have this premium Warlock Rewards package. Some people would be like, hey, this is a fourth set of armor. If you need to fill some holes, it's a good way to, you know, save this one. Now, if you have multiple characters, you could open this on the first one and skip it for the other two. But if you only have one character, open this thing as quickly as possible. If you bought the season pass, I will tell you, this is a very quick thing that you do want to open. Mainly because you get an experience boost that is 20%. You want to have that active the entire time to help your artifact get more experience all the time. You also get the new exotic, which is probably going to get patched soon a little bit because it's breaking bosses. But there's also an exotic catalyst quest that goes with it, which allows you to improve the weapon. And that quest is going to take everyone a little while. So you want to get cracking on that thing as quick as possible. Yes, it would be nice if for some reason I needed one more time to pull another chest piece later on that was going to be higher. But all in all, the you'll eventually get that chest piece to drop and the experience boost and the exotic quest that you've got to go through for this uh, bonus change to this weapon is going to be worth, you know, waiting on that piece of armor. I promise. If you only have one character, make sure you open this one to get these two going. It's better off. 
So the Season Pass is one of the ways you can fill a hole on pieces of armor. Now, depending on how big the gap actually is, you can actually get a piece of blue armor to drop that's actually going to take care of that as well. So, depending on the level that you are or how big the gap actually is, you might actually wait to see if a piece of blue armor, which is nothing special, but it still could be high enough to give you that boost that you need. Right now, even at my... So, if I go for my highest character level right now, it gets a little crazy. Um, let's say my highest gear score is 1017, if I put all my highest stuff on. Let's say, for example, you know, I'm in this state. My gear score is 1014, and I have this one piece of armor that is a thousand power level, and it's just so far behind everything else. I'm like, man, I need a chest piece really, really badly. Well, you could potentially go to the season pass, and especially if you're a new character, you don't have a bunch of tokens to go turn into a vendor, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, so your only other option is either you only have one time to pull from the season pass, or what you actually may not know is that blue armor will drop within three power levels of your highest maximum gear score. So I know if I go to the season pass, I can see what the highest gear score, what my highest gear score could be. And your blue in your blue items can drop either three below, two below, one below, or even the exact same level as your maximum gear score. So if my max gear score is 1017, I can actually get a piece of blue armor right now that drops at 1017. Now, even if I almost max myself out, this chess piece is still 1011. That means I can still potentially get a blue item that drops at, at the absolute minimum. If I see a blue chest that drops, it's going to be 1014. But it could be, you know, up to 1017. So if you have a big enough gap where... You know, you're not sure if you want to pull that piece of armor from the season pass. Try and go play some basic things like, um, you know, public events or, you know, run around and shoot things on a planet. Go do some lost sectors. Things like that. If you do get a, a finally, when you do get that chest piece to drop, it's going to be a big enough boost. And you've saved those other specific drops that you can choose when you need to. So it's kind of up to you on how you want to go about that. But that is another thing to remember. Blues are going to be dropping anywhere from minus three to minus zero in relation to your current max power level. So blues are something you don't want to just completely instantly delete. Now, when you get to like really high level, yeah, they really don't serve a lot of purpose. But even as you're leveling up, up until you get to pinnacles, they can still help you fill some gaps if you're if you're just getting unlucky in a certain spot. So the last thing that you can do is go to a certain vendors and you can actually buy um, just packages and they have a chance to drop something that will give you a high power level as well. Now, usually with the vendors, what you're going to need is tokens for those vendors or say there's a a vendor on a planet, you need the planetary materials to buy a package. Now, if you're a new player, you don't have anywhere near the currencies that I do. I've been playing this game for three plus years. That's why I have thousands of each of these. So if you're a new player, you probably can't do this. But if you're a veteran player, there's actually a really cool website that you may not know about. All right, well, shout out to follow up plays for this one. But this is a cool website called vendorengrams.xyz. Sounds like a weird, you know, .xyz thing, but it's legit. It's just kind of a goofy looking website. But what it's going to show you is the vendors that are dropping gear at a high level. So right now we have Asher Mir and Commander Zavala. And they're going to have a high gear score. And it says dropping high, which is going to be uh, plus usually minus zero. And then we've also got Anna Bray, which is actually dropping at minus zero. But that one's going to change, you know, very soon. Uh, Asher Mir and Commander Zavala are going to be minus zero all week long. You can see these are all dropping low. So I really don't want to go spend some time working on those. But, you know, if I have some planetary materials for Ashramir or some tokens for Zavala, and I know I need, you know, to try and go for that chest piece, I could turn in tokens to Zavala until I get a chest piece to drop, and I know that is going to be 1,017. So, just a cool website. Wanted to show you guys, if you're looking to see which vendor is, you know, going to be at that highest possible level dropping, basically matching your highest gear score, this is a nice little quick website you can check to see where you can go turn in some materials and hopefully get something beneficial. Now, before I start listing off all the activities that are powerful engrams and pinnacles and tier one and tier two, there are a couple that are actually not listed. Now, that is kind of weird, I know, but basically they're related to your ranks in both Gambit, your infamy rank, and then if you go over to Crucible, you've got two different ranking systems. Most playlists that you can see right here are going to be using the Valor system. 
The way Valor works is as you play matches, you increase that rank. Now, if you win, you earn more. If you lose, you earn less. So it's, you know, it behooves you to win. But Valor cannot go down. So that one's always going to go up. On the other side, you have Survival. And this is the only playlist that deals with Glory. Now, Glory is one of those that can go up and go down. But unless you just lose like 12 in a row, it's typically going to go up because it goes up a lot faster than it goes down. And if you do want to try it out, my advice is to play Survival Freelance because there are no mat there are no teams allowed. So it is only fire teams of one. It will match make you into a team of three versus another team of three. But there are no like pre-made teams. Everybody's random. Everybody's kind of on a level playing field. And you may be against you know better players one time and worse players another. But even if you win like 50% of your matches, your glory rank is going to go up. Now the glory ranks work by name. As you guys can see up top, I've got Guardian 1 currently listed because I haven't touched anything. Now, each rank is going to have three different levels. Guardian 1, Guardian 2, Guardian 3. Those are all within one, you know, the Guardian ranking. When I go up to Brave, that's when things change. So as you go Guardian 1, Guardian 2, Guardian 3, you might get a couple drops, but they're probably not going to be powerful. But when you change the name of your rank in any of these ranking systems, both Infamy and Gambit, and Valor and Glory and Crucible you're actually going to get a powerful drop every time that name changes. So, now the lower levels actually go fairly quickly as well. Like, it's probably only going to take a couple matches to go from Guardian 1 to Brave 1, and then from Brave 2 to Brave 3. Then when you get to Heroic, you get another powerful. Now, it takes a little longer to level up as you get higher in the ranks, but it's still going to get you powerful, powerful drops that aren't even listed on the director. And the cool thing about Glory is as you earn glory, you're also going to be earning valor. So it's two birds with one stone. Now you may not love the idea of a 3v3 kind of sweaty playlist, but the amount of powerful drops that you can get from spending some time in survival, especially freelance, it's a little more level playing field if you don't have a team, is definitely going to be worth its while. So Gambit, you can do Gambit or Gambit Prime. And if you go through, you're probably going to do more than your three matches. And that may be a pinnacle, so you might want to save this one for a little later in your grind. But if you want to spend some time in Crucible, especially, spend some time in the Survival Freelance playlist. Work on Glory. You'll earn Valor as well. And you're going to get a lot more powerful engrams than somebody who feels like spending less time in these playlists and not ranking up very much. So if you're looking to continue to boost that power level, spend some time in PvP, Survival Freelance especially, or some time in Gambit if you prefer that. So we've covered stuff for new players, we've covered a couple of tips, and now we're going to go through all of the things that you can do. Now, if you see something that says Powerful Gear Tier 1, then that's going to be something that you probably want to do first. If you see Powerful Gear Tier 2, you want to do those second. And then if you see something that's Pinnacle Gear, you want to try and save those till last. And the main reason is, Powerful Gear is going to drop, Tier 1 is plus 2, Tier 2 is plus 4, and Pinnacle, up until you get to the Pinnacle cap, which I'll talk about a little later, is plus 5. Now, the main reason you want to do Tier 1 first, for a quick explanation, say I'm level 1000, I'm just going to use this as a base example, and I do a powerful gear entry and I get a 1003 helmet. Cool! I got a, you know, I got 3 power level boost. My average, honestly, may still be the same, so I may still be 1000 power level overall, um, but I'm slowly going to work on my average. That's why you want to do those first. They're going to bump up that average. Say instead on accident, I did the 100,000 Nightfall first and I got that pinnacle drop. That is a 1,005 drop. So if I was 1,005, did the 100,000 score and I got the helmet at 1,005, cool. But then if I go back and finish the other two Nightfall runs and I go do and I get a 1,003 drop and say it lands in the same spot, I literally just wasted that powerful gear because the pinnacle was higher. Now, you're going to have some RNG where you get drops in the same slot. I could do a couple different powerful tier 1s, and I could get three different helms. That's RNG. That's just how some of that goes. But that's why you want to do the lowest level stuff first, right, to try and spread those out as much as you can, hopefully. Then when you start doing the higher level stuff, at least you know you're not going to get something that's underneath the pinnacle. So save the pinnacles for the last part of the grind. Powerful gear, tier 1 and tier 2 first. Pinnacles should be last. So let's go through the listing of Powerful Gear Tier 1, Tier 2, and Pinnacles, and then wrap up talking about these goofy Umbral Engrams. All right, Powerful Gear Tier 1. We're going to start in the tower. You've got a lot of your NPCs and a lot of bounties that you need to do. So you've got Powerful Gear Tier 1, eight bounties from Gambit. You need to do eight bounties from the Gunsmith, eight bounties from Shaxx for PvP, 
and eight bounties from Vanguard for uh, doing work in strikes. Now this rotates every week, but your flashpoint, whatever week it, whatever planet it is on for the week, is also powerful gear tier one. Flashpoint is public events, lost sectors, heroic adventures, uh, high value targets. I think will do a little bit as well. Again, this is a powerful tier, powerful gear tier one drop. In the Vanguard, we've got the Nightfall, the Ordeal, just three basic completions. Now, one easy way to do this is to do it match made. So, especially as you're leveling up, and as we are very early on in the season, these higher level activities are going to be a bit of a struggle. I know these numbers look insane. Cover that in another day. But all you got to do is three adept versions of the Nightfall, the Ordeal. 750 power level, so you can do it literally as soon as you have, like, guns to fire with in the game. And you'll see that that one shows powerful gear tier one. Now, the 100,000 gear score is going to be hard to get early on in the season. But if you could acquire it, what you would want to do is if you're leveling for a week, do the three Nightfall the Ordeals at the lower difficulty and then come back later when you're ready for pinnacle gear and then go for the 100,000 gear score. But we'll get back to that. If you have Shadowkeep, you've got quite a few activities here on the moon. You've got your memory quest or your bounties over here for Eris. I don't think I've done all the memories. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of your weekly bounty that you've got to do. That's powerful gear tier one. You've also got the Lectern. Again, if you have the Shadow Keep expansion, defeat Nightmares and Sorrows Harbor, that's powerful gear tier one. You've got your week, you've got your mission of the day that you can do. Um, you get to do it once a week. And if you do one, it rotates every day, the mission does. But if you do, you replay one of the Shadow Keep missions, you will get a powerful gear tier one. And the Nightmare Hunts. If you complete three of them on any difficulty, that's also powerful gear tier one. Now, when it comes to tier two, there's only a couple. Maybe one related to a season we'll get to in a second. But we've also got clan rewards. Now, if you're not in a clan, you can try and search for a public clan that's open and join that one. See if it's got a decent amount of players in it, you can see. And if they're just playing through, whether they're doing strikes or things like that, um, you can get some benefits from like clan engrams as well, which are kind of nice bonuses. But also, you can get your tier two powerful engram and that is going to be a plus four. So you just need 5,000 experience that you've earned over the course of the game, which takes a little while. So I always wonder how that's calculated. But either way, when you do that 5,000 for the clan, you're going to get that plus four tier two reward. Now this season, we also have the new public event called Contact. This is related to the pyramid ships. You need contact completions. I don't know if it's just 50% for each one. Uh, it seemed to go fairly quick for my other character. This is also a tier two powerful drop. All right, so that's tier one and tier two powerful. Now you also have the option of pinnacle engrams. Now pinnacles are what are gonna actually take you all the way to the max gear score, but you won't be there at first. From 1000 to 1050, pinnacle engrams are gonna drop at a plus five. So these are the ones you wanna wait till the end if possible. So again, do your basic bounties, do your basic um, strikes and story missions on Shadowkeep and that type of stuff. And when we go through the pinnacles, remember, these are plus five, and these you want to save to the end. And as you go through 1,000 to 1,050, as you get to 1,050, you'll notice the powerful stop helping you. Now, you have pinnacle engrams that are going to be able to take you from 1,050 to 1,060. 1,060 is the absolute max your gear can ever get to. Now, the order, you know, if you are a very active hardcore raider, you're probably going to get to max gear score a little faster than somebody who can only do the few basic pinnacles of strikes, you know, crucible, vanguard, and stuff like that. So it depends on how much you can play and what acti activities you jump in. And also, pinnacles drop in two styles. As you're going through pinnacles up until 1050, they all drop as plus five. But when you're trying to make that final climb with pinnacles from 1050 to 1060, some pinnacles will give you a plus one bonus. Say it was 1,051, it would give me 1,052. But on the other side, if you're over 1,050 and you do some of the harder things, those are going to drop as a plus two. So if I was 1,051, it'd give me 1,053. So remember, there are plus one pinnacles and plus two pinnacles. And pinnacles only work that way once you have reached gear score of 1,050. Up until that point, they are a plus five to kind of help push you through the leveling. Let's go through the pinnacle items that you guys can work on. In the Vanguard, you've got three strikes that you need to run matching the same burn that is going to be of the element of the week. So I need to run three strikes using a solar subclass. Also for the Nightfall, the Ordeal, I need to complete one Nightfall with a team score above 100,000 points. 
For Gambit, you just need to complete three Gambit matches. That can be regular or prime. Doesn't really matter which one. For Crucible, for Pinnacle Gear, you've got your core matches. And that is the four big director nodes here in the middle. Rumble, Control, Elimination, and Survival. So if I do four matches in Control, I'm going to get that Pinnacle Gear drop. Now this season in the tower, we have two Pinnacle sources actually in the tower. One is the Prismatic Recaster. It's a weekly quest, means to an end. Pretty much it means you have to go do the contact public event on IO. Right now it's where it's located. I'm sure that thing is going to move around. And the idea is you got to do the public event a couple times. Now, when you do the contact public event twice, when you finish that public event, you might get your drop directly from there. That's going to be tier two. But if you finish the means to an end quest, you can wait to turn it in until you're ready for that Pinnacle Gear drop. So when you're ready, then come back to this little Prismatic Recaster next to the Drifter, and it's going to give you that Pinnacle drop once you finish the quest. Now, the other thing in the tower is one of the two dungeons that are active right now, and this is called Prophecy. This is a new one that literally launched two days ago, and when you complete the Prophecy dungeon, it is power level recommended 140. The boss arena is 1060, so 1040 to start, 1060 to jump in there. I jumped in there with a buddy of mine, and we were about 1020, and we got whooped pretty hard. Now, with three people and coordination and wells and bubbles and stuff like that, it has been done, completed by some, solo by the rare ridiculous flu right now, but this is one of those that you're probably not going to be doing for a little while. So until you get to a higher power level, this pinnacle gear may get unused for you for some time. Just depends on how high your power power level is. But again, if you're like 1015, you're like, oh, can I? I would not jump into this thing until you are about 1040 to start. 1031 maybe will get you closer to the delta of damage where it's not brutal. But at least until you're about 1031, I wouldn't even consider it. There's got to be other things that you can probably go do. Now, the moon is going to be where most of your pinnacle drops are going to be located. And you've got the nightmare hunts, which they do tend to upgrade the level on these every season. So just like the crazy nightfalls, the master hot nightmare hunt that is going to drop your pinnacle is 1080. Now, as I said, the, the max your gear score can get to is 1060. And if you get to 1060 and then maybe you get your artifact bonus by doing a whole bunch of, you know, experience related things... Maybe you can get your bonus up to plus 20 and match this, but again, the Master Nightmare Hunts, just like the dungeon in the tower, are something you're probably not going to do for a while, so I wouldn't really worry about these too much until you get there later. Now, there are a couple of activities that aren't quite as high, but are still pinnacle from Shadowkeep. One is the Dungeon Pit of Heresy, the three-person dungeon, recommended power 940. I think maybe the boss area maxes out at like 960 or 980 or something like that. Either way... I definitely know if we're working on a thousand or more power level, this one isn't as bad. So you'll be over leveled. You don't like stomp everything. Plenty of things in here can still kill you because it's kind of normalized, but you definitely could be a normal level to face this one. And that also applies for the raid garden of salvation. Nice thing about the raid, every single drop in there. And there's like five, I think at least maybe six, depending on all the bonus chests and stuff. And if you do the challenge, anyway, five to six drops from here that you can get, and they're all going to be at that pinnacle level. So that is how one of my characters has this, like, 1030 shotgun. It was substantially above anything else I've seen drop, and it came from the raid. So remember, if you can get a group together and run a raid, or if you go on LFG and find a nice group, raids are definitely going to give you lots of drops, but that's something you want to save until you're almost done working on that character. It's kind of the last thing that you want to do, because it's going to be like five or six pinnacle level drops, all of which are going to be beneficial. You might get a lot of energy weapons in there. By the way, like Garden of Salvation is really well known to drop a lot of energy weapons. I've been getting a decent amount of armor, so knock on wood, I've been lucky. But if you walk out of there with like four energy weapons, that's just bad luck, but it happens to a lot of people. But if you do need an energy weapon, it's a great place to go find one as well. Alrighty, Guardians, the final thing for this season is down here with the Prismatic Recaster and the Umbral Decoder. You're going to get these Umbral Engrams. They're these purple things that are going to be a bit more... Um, you can pick basically what you're going for, which I'll do a video explaining later. So I can do, you know, a pyramid-focused Umbral Engram. It's going to drop the new weapons of the season. But as you guys work with this Prismatic Recaster, you're going to get a currency, Twisted Energy. You can get some from the weekly bounties, some from the season pass. You get a little bit when you do some upgrades. But the Gifts of Light and Dark, which is how you're going to upgrade the Recaster, picture like the bunkers and the obelisks that we've had previously. You just have one of these to work with, though. I think you have to do Umbral Enhancement first, as that's the only way you can focus everything. 
But the second one that you should go for is Umbral Mastery. And you'll notice the second line is the first three Umbral Engrams decrypted each week of ward gear at higher power. So make sure if you do have the season and you're going through this stuff, make sure as you get those Umbral Engrams that these are at least going to be at least tier one. I don't know if they're tier one or tier two. They were a pretty big jump, actually. Um, and then especially if you can go for armor or weapons, if you need one or the other, you can even focus those a little bit. So if you got three powerful gear drops, you know, and then you come over here and you've got a little bit of the currency for focusing, you could be like, okay, I want one of the new weapons because I'm missing a couple slots there, or I'm really slacking in the armor department and I could choose to go here and get armor engrams instead of weapons that are going to help me level up there as well. You can choose to focus or you can just take your normal um, umbral, umbral engram and still decrypt it over at the decryptor. And when you go over here, I don't have any currently on this character, but if you had any, they would drop at a higher power level. So that is the last place where you can get powerful gear. And I know that's a lot of information, but I wanted to kind of cover it in depth for you guys, whether it be for new players or veteran players, a couple tips and things. Tried to gather all the information I could for you guys. So hopefully this leveling guide is beneficial to all of you. Um, if you guys are watching this, um, I'm going to be covering the Sony thing here in just a little bit and then probably doing a recap on that one. We've also got the podcast with Amaze, an awesome streamer. That is going to be Friday night, so it's going to be June 12th, and that's going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So tune in, twitch.tv slash Ubontis for our podcast, The Last Word. Awesome guest this week. Oh, so much to talk about with the Bungie reveal. So hopefully you guys found this video beneficial, and I look forward to seeing you guys in chat, in my streams, on Twitter, or right here on YouTube. If you did enjoy the video, drop a like, leave a comment if you got questions, or if you know other tips that you can throw for everybody else up there as well. And of course, hit that subscribe button and the alert bell. That's a great way to support the channel. We're not that far away from 50k, so please hit that sub button if you haven't. And if you enjoyed the content, there's plenty more to come. Have a great one. I'll see you guys soon, and enjoy, enjoy the season. Lots to come in the world of Destiny.